it's Joy and Stanford who's watching House of the Dragon season one episode six The Princess and the Queen and I, I'm so excited for this episode but I'm also really sad because this marks the halfway point and I'm pretty sure from what people have said that we are just immediately doing the 10 year time jump right now. I am so excited for Olivia Cook, Olivia Cook and Emma Darcy. Um, I know they were both cast originally and then the younger actresses were cast both on their own talent and to match them. I have absolutely adored the younger two actresses in their roles and I genuinely still wish we could have the concurrently although I Olivia Cook is an actress I have really loved for a long time. I don't believe I've seen Emma Darcy in anything but I'm sure they'll be great. Um, I'm so excited to see both of their portrayals of these characters in the 10 year time but I'm also like 10 years is a really long time and we kind of only just saw the severing of the connection between Alison and Rhaenyra so like you know Alison calling her stepdaughter and kind of that moment of Alison stepping up to be like beginning the long campaign for her own children over Rhaenyra um and the dynamic and everything there there would have been some very juicy moments we have skipped over just like we skipped over the, the initial like Alison marrying the king I understand when they've done it this is a plot line that takes place over many years and we don't want to spend you know if we did it timelines accurately there would be whole episodes where literally nothing happened that was interesting however I would find that interesting because I am here for all the nitty-gritty details um but I am very excited to see these two actors in these in the roles that we've come to love um as of right now I maintain still that I am not on either team I'm on both teams I support Alison and I support Rhaenyra now both characters can go on to do things that make me dislike them of course um, but right now I think they are both young women slightly older than they were but still young women who have been in a place and in a possible situation by the patriarchal system they live in that meant they could never really come together and talk and try and like the best case scenario here would have been the two of them forming a dynamic team and just taking on everybody else I do also want to say something quickly that I don't think I touched on too much in um, my reaction last week because I was kind of too much in shock which is um, Kristen Cole murdering Joffrey and I've seen people calling it like homophobic killing now I want to say I'm obviously first of all I'm not the person who has the authority to speak on this so if I am getting anything wrong or misunderstanding anything tell me and I will 100% apologize um I kind of see it as not really I don't think Kristen Cole did it because oh my god he's gay I'm gonna kill him I truly think it was a case of his honor had been stretched he'd kind of he'd done this thing that had he'd gone against everything he'd ever believed in Rhaenyra had been like I'm not gonna run away with you I'm a queen and he kind of was feeling at his absolute lowest ebb and then somebody else came along and was like huh? I know your secret and he just lashed out at that person and just wasn't even thinking and was just trying to just you know and then he wanted to go and kill himself I think he was trying to like just get rid of that that secret because of the shame he was feeling so I don't think he did it I think yes I don't think if a woman had said that to him he would have killed her but that's to do with all the patriarchal double standards and everything they've got going on I do think it was literally just somebody knows my secret this can't be I can't deal with this I will say that on the flip side of that and it's also I'm still gonna always judge Kristen Cole for having just beat a man senseless because he was feeling a bit sad that day I don't like him for it but I don't think it was necessarily driven by homophobia maybe there were elements in that who knows um, I will say that I think it is more of a problem for the writers and the showrunners of the show that one of the only gay, openly gay characters in the show got his head bashed in in the first episode he was in. That is more of an iffy standard and you know I've been thinking a lot about this because you see people saying and they quite rightly point out this is a fantasy with dragons why can't gay characters be allowed to exist and be accepted by the people around them my one thing whenever i think about this and i read a lot of fantasy books is so much of these like medieval-ish fantasy societies obviously it's fictional but it's medieval-ish um blood is what matters and your children being the two bloodlines coming together is the key so obviously aristocratic people would struggle with the idea of having gay marriages because then they couldn't have any natural born heirs but then if you have your so you could build your society in a way where adoption they view as perfectly valid and they're like yeah that's our child we raise the child that's what matters or you could have some kind of arrangement like Rhaenyra and Lainor were gonna have and everyone's just like oh yeah they have one of those arrangements and that's fine you know maybe they just produce the children when they need to or whatever um I think there are definitely ways it can be done and that you wouldn't even need to have long bits of exposition on it you would just have you know oh just so you know like if we're gonna get married just be open with you you know I do have a girlfriend and then the person would be like oh well that's okay with me you know we'll do our you, you know I feel like there are ways around it while still staying true to the like bloodline-ness the heirs and everything um so I do think that is something that they need to do better with obviously with Game of Thrones there wasn't a whole load of it either we had Renly dying and this is kind of another example of there's no I mean I 
I think I try not to look too much at spoilers but I was kind of looking at some things people were saying about this because obviously it's quite a big topic and something that needs to be talked about if there are if in general if characters are homophobic I do want to say I don't think Kristen Cole was motivated by homophobia I think it was silly with all of other shit that was going on he still killed someone for no reason so like yeah that's gonna mar how I see him forever but I think from a writing standpoint the world that we've established with Westeros is a world that is homophobic to a degree throughout all of history though upper class people have had I mean everyone gay people have always existed it's just either they can put that they were, they were best friends and they lived together or you know one of the England's greatest kings Richard the Lionheart we're like pretty certain he was gay and no doubt at the time there were some snide comments made about it but you know he kept his throne other kings didn't do so well but like he could they I think in the original text he dies in a jousting accident or something I feel like they could have just had him keeping his boyfriend or just have them break up I don't think we need to see more gay people dying um I do think it was more just a it, it I, I think the fact that he was gay wasn't necessarily why they killed him but I do think they need to think about who they're killing if that makes sense so anyway I want to reiterate again that I'm not the, the font of all knowledge on this and obviously if there if people were upset by this as a result of seeing a gay person beaten to death then I am not saying they are wrong to feel that way. I just think from, from a character standpoint, I'm not going to be sitting here screaming homophobe at Kristen Cole, but I am going to be like, you broke your own honour and then you killed someone. Don't like you anymore. So yes. Um, anyway, I've waffled on about that a lot. I hope I made sense with what I was saying. It's definitely a top conversation that needs to be had is um, LGBT representation in shows like this, in high fantasy shows. Um, and if you have a world like this, a pre-rich and established world where homophobia is not publicly accepted or whatever, then write it in a better way. Um, but yeah, <sighs> other than that, this, this show has been fantastic. I am sad to lose um, Emily Carey and Millie Olcock. Her name just jumped out of my head. Names, like I said, I'm not good at. But I am so excited for Olivia Cook and Emma Darcy. I just wish somehow we could have concurrent timelines. It would just be so interesting. Or some little flashback moments. I don't know. Um, I just, I'm gonna miss them, okay? I would have watched 300 seasons of this show if, or like, you know, if say this show takes place over 30 years, I'd have watched 30 seasons and we do a, a year a season and most of them could just be boring day-to-day -day court life. I'd have loved it. Anyway, a reminder that you can find the unedited version of this reaction on my Patreon and let's go. Hello, Rhaenyra. Princess. The Queen has requested that the child be brought to her. Immediately. Power moves. I took a lance through the shoulder once. Fuck you. <laughs> Simply please. She can come to us. All right? Unless you wish to carry me down those fucking stairs. There's Rhaenyra. I would have liked to have got these glimpses of them over these last 10 years. Obviously that would defeat the purpose of changing actresses. This is absurd. It is. Both Alison demanding to see her immediately and her going. I mean, she wanted to see the baby. Princess. Fuck. That is him, right? So he has beat someone to death in the middle of the wedding and is just casually serving as the Queen's guard. There she is. Happy news this morning. Indeed, Your Grace. Where is he? God, he's lost a whole hand. Arm. He's got leprosy. The babe have a name yet? God, we haven't spoken. Joffrey. Oof. He'll be called Joffrey. If he has his father's nose. Thank you. <clears throat> Was that look suggesting that somebody else is fathering these children? Is that what Alison suspects? Sooner or later you're gonna get one who looks like you. Oof. Oof. If any one of us is bleeding, I deserve some say in the affairs of my own. She leaving a trail of blood, she is, isn't she? Straight to him. See, I wanna know the fallout of what happened with Cole, because obviously, like, did he claim Joffrey was planning to murder the princess and so he had to stop him that must have been the sort of thing they said but i'd like to know the immediate aftermath of that i imagine he and alison have got together because they feel betrayed by rainera 
but like and in the world they live in him being someone to death doesn't seem quite as brutal as it does in our world necessarily but at the same time like he did just casually murder someone at a wedding feast so then they didn't have seven days of festivities they had one evening that had a murder and then a wedding how is he still here that looks like the perfect one Hello, Luches. they're his kids because they're brunettes Fuck, they are his kids. Back to the dragon pit for you too. As I send out a search party. This is I mean, it makes sense as a dynamic, but you think it's also interesting. But so much has happened in the past ten years, I wanna know everything. Why would two Valerian people have a brunette kid? Two white haired Valerians. His parents were all white-haired Valerians, largely related to each other. How is this family dynamic amongst the children? These boys are going to be fighting each other on a battlefield one day, I imagine. They wear their green. Jesus Christ. It's your brother! At least they seem more like family. They're all bullying him together. Are you sure it wasn't our egg on put them up to it? Yes, it was. I'm afraid I don't. Don't. Preserves. Ten years have made her even bolder with him. We shall continue this in the fall. In but he wants to believe, so he can believe if he wants to. That makes sense. Just the most unremarkable brown horse. <laughs> so much of like. <laughs> <laughs> Westeros dynasty tracing and like figuring out the true father is literally based on that family always has black haired people, that family always has blonde haired people, and I'll live for it. God, he knows. Or did once, but has convinced himself otherwise, he'll do naught but make excuses for her. But like Alison clutched to him because he was the only person who'd be on her side. A spider who stings and sucks her prey dry. Fuck. Kristen, you. I mean, I know that like he talked the actor talked about how like they plan that like sex scenes make it like realistic with the armor coming off needs to be like would take time would take two of them or whatever the position of power she had over him still made that dynamic freaking weird and for me it was more that Rhaenyra never questioned it I would have liked a beat where she said something like I'm not here as your princess I'm just here as a girl like something where she kind of attempted to remove said power imbalance You, you did see him murder someone, but I understand why you needed somebody to cling on to. And oh, hello. Do you think Rhaenyra's sons will be your playthings forever? As things stand. Raising her children to the war too, the last thing she'd have wanted, but... Sarah's Targaryen, she can move to cut off any challenge to her succession. Then I won't... You are the challenge! You are the challenge, Aegon! Simply by living and breathing! She's changed so much in these past ten years. You are the king's firstborn son. Is that one day you will be our king? Alison didn't want this for her children, but she will fight for their survival if she has to. You need to start taking your life more seriously, idiot. What have you been up to for the past ten years, other than growing your hair? They were like, we can't age him over the course of fifteen years like the others. <laughs> Just grow his hair, cut his hair, grow his hair. Ooh, did they get married? Did they have children? Jesus Christ. Has he given up on Westeros? I doubt it. Rise again. We are without responsibility. Political scheming. The end is shifting. Damon, you really over all that? None of our I want my daughters to be raised in their homeland with their family according to their birthright. They run away to get married together. Die a death. And your children will want you to die old and in your bed, but okay. In so many ways, this was like a pilot mark too. He's here to watch over his sons. I just... I don't blame Rhaenyra, but it's like... Playing with fire. Eldest son against eldest son. 
It may one day be on the battlefield. I can't I hope to Sarah's wins. I that Viserys hasn't questioned his sons wearing green. Don't let him get up. Fuck. Oh, what? Krista, what the fuck are you doing? This is what you teach, Cole. The bully children. Oh, shouldn't... I don't understand how we got weaseled away with everything and now he gets to, like, beat up the kids. Your interest in the princing's training is quite unusual, Commander. Yes. Most... Or a son. This is quite literally how Kristen murdered someone and got away with it. I can't say I feel that bad for him. Mm-hmm. Is it? He's trying to protect you. No clue about the real stakes of what's going on in their lives. Do you put your family first? Have played my part. This was our agreement. I have not begrudged you. But things are changing. To your children. You've claimed them as such. Your honour. Very well then, I command you. Fuck. As your princess. So alliances can seem perfect. There are always strings attached. It was a risky game they were playing. She kind of needed to find a... Uh, mash with white hair. Not Damon. To sleep with. This really, I know I keep saying it, but this truly feels like Pilot Mark II. Things are so different now to how they were. We have all the seeds that were planted there, but so many of them have like completely grown to fruition or whatever the freaking term is. Is he though? I think he's better off here. Stay here, Damon. Obviously he's not going to, but maybe that's a bit more peace for us all. Arison of soldiers sent to hold our ground. We cannot afford it. Open hostility. I think Rhaenyra would be a very good queen. They were so close once. And for any offence given by mine, I apologize. This is the higher ground. We are one house. Long before that, we were friends. I think you should have made this move a long time ago. My son, Jocerus, will inherit the Iron Throne after me. I propose we betroth him to your daughter, Helena. That is the Targaryen way. Once and for all. Most judicious proposition. Incest are us, Targaryens. This is a big move from Rhaenyra. Rhaenyra, I will consider it duly. You must rest now, husband. I feel like Alison was pushed too far too young. If only they'd made some kind of deal like this years ago, though again, cousins should not matter, or uncles and cousin nephews and aunts should not. The proposal is a good one, my queen. I mean it is for the realm. We're a family. No one has handled anything very well here. They've all handled it very humanly, and that is why we are in a mess. To all others. I mean, his son has literally been begetting your grandchildren outside of the marriage bed. I mean, it is standing behind you. Name it if it casts such a gloom. Yes. Name it. There is no good way out of this. I cannot. You can help me. It's definitely still some kind of deserved, not jealousy isn't quite the right word, word of jealousy, it's that Rhaenyra can, it's kind of like throughout their entire lives, Rhaenyra has been able to do whatever the fuck she wants and get away with it. And Alison has been fallen into this life where she feels both miserable and also like she has to fight for her children's very survival. And you know, by this point, 
Rhaenyra are making a deal that would bind their two houses, as incestuous as that is, though to her uncle-niece relationships seem great, or this would be aunt-nephew. Um, it should be a sign that we'll protect your children, we won't view them as threats, but things have just gone so far it's too little too late and i don't know how rhaenyra could possibly have had the foresight or the awareness of the situation given that she was herself a child back then Without wine is also a sin. Mm. he is good with his maneuvers it's a willful blindness it is it's, i mean i don't know from the source material it was as black and white whose children they really were but the fact that they don't have the valyrian hair none of them but Alice's children all do, and she doesn't. Like, I can't say, my queen, that your father would be impartial. No, no, but he would be partial to me. Yep. Seems as if the whole world's against her and her children. Try to remove the infant by way of the blade. So do one. The exact choice from the pilot. Lena? God, is she off to drive Dragon Rider's death? She wanted to go out in a noble dra Dragon Rider way. How did she get that far ahead of you? There truly was no way for her to be saved, I suppose. And what's fascinating, you know, you will know I have not been Daemon Targaryen's biggest fan. I think he's incredibly power-hungry and self-serving. But the fact that he has been sulking here and just kind of, like, re reading in his library does endear him to me ever so slightly. Um, also the fact that he didn't say, save my child, like Viserys said in episode one, shows a slight better in character. They're so clearly his children. Do they know it? They are bastards and they technically don't have a right to the throne by the way these systems work. Solomon Strong, my father. Yep. You are a Targaryen. Because what about it? She didn't lie to him. That is so interesting. She could have so easily assured him no. Of course not. But she didn't lie. She just assured him you are a Targaryen. Very interesting. As the heir, you need to make it, especially a contested heir, you really ought to make your position. No said, if you were Bring him. God. We'll need every sword we can muster. She is good. If only years ago, Alison and Rhaenyra have been able to fucking sit down and talk for like hours. Oh fuck. He wants them killed, that's what he. Eh? His own family? There are so many people out here that are just in it for themselves and they've got his little... Is that a scarab beetle or something? Your own family. I like Alison, but why is her side filled with the worst people? <laughs> was Harrenhal not... Was, I, I don't, I'm stupid, I know. I know there was a story of Harrenhal burning and whatnot. Was this the time it happened? These poor babies. The dead. You've heard the stories of Harren Hall, Your Grace. Spoken to you this by Harren the Black. Of course, yeah, so it's was... greatness. Blood mixed into the mortar. Did Alison know he was gonna do that beforehand? You pass judgment. She didn't know. Queen makes a wish. Fuck. She didn't. I feel certain you will reward me. It's a dangerous game. She's stuck in the middle of. Has been since she was a child, and it's not her fault. That continued actions will become her fault, but so far. Okay, so this really felt like another pilot. So much was different, and it's not just a change of actors. It is literally just 
the scene in Westeros is so wildly different to how it was 10 years before and 10 years have happened. Um, I would have liked almost one more episode in the past to just kind of see the beginning of Alison launching her campaign and the beginning of Rhaenyra maybe realising, oh, I'm fucked up there. Um, the thing that is so absolutely crazy to me is that Kristen Cole got away with everything. I mean, I kind of thought he would, but I think that's part of why I would have liked one more episode set back then, would have just been to see how, and I presume it was they claimed Joffrey was up to no good and therefore he was a glorious knight who saved the day and that's why he's like a very powerful member of the king's cult. But like, yeah, but that's not great. The dynamic among the children is very interesting. Um, and I think it's quite fascinating because I suppose, I don't know how old Aegon is supposed to be in this exact timeline. It's 10 years on from when I'd say he was meant to be around three or four. So he's probably meant to be like 14-ish and then he'll get older, I presume. Um, now, he got to that age being kind of ignorant and spoilt of the dangers of the position he is in. And I think in some ways that is good. That shows you that despite her manoeuvrings and schemings, Alison has kind of been able to protect and shield her children from the dangerous situation that they are in because their very lives are dangerous. But I think it's very interesting that now at this point, it's almost like you are old enough now, you're gonna have to, you need to know the truth and you need to start acting better. You need to start becoming a team with your family because it will be us against them one day. I wish for a thousand times over it would not be, but you know, with hindsight, you can say, oh, if way back when they were kids, Alison and Rhaenyra had just sat down and had a nice chat things could have gone so much better but they are real people in real scenarios and it's very easy to think the worst of somebody else when you're suffering and to not be able to see you know I think in, if at any point Alison and Rhaenyra had been able to see the world through each other's eyes and each other's understandings they would have had been able to come together so easily but that is not the world they live in they live in a patriarchal society and you know Rhaenyra getting everything she wants and getting away with it Alison's suffering and you can see how she's ended up where she is I still like her and I still support her um obviously I think she's become a much harsher and colder person but that makes sense with 10 years passing 10 years being married to a man you do not love 10 years being worried about your position and your children's safety and kind of the world you live in constantly worrying for dangers and feeling like there's no one on your side and you're entirely alone within that world it is no wonder that she is becoming harsher and colder now for me the pivotal moments were when she told talked to Aegon and she told him you know basically drilled into him one day when Rhaenyra becomes queen and your life will be forfeit because there are men out there who will think you should be the rightful heir so you need to wake up and start acting differently also a pivotal moment was when she in the end, her absolute horror at what had happened to Harrenal. Her, she was not like, ha, yeah, got my enemies. I think it was very much, as of right now, she hasn't done anything I dislike. Um, and I worry she might, because I feel as though, as much as these stories aren't necessarily designed to give us a character to support, given that I mean, I suppose her children are technically Targaryens. I mean, they are Targaryens, they're not Hightowers. But given that we know the Targaryen dynasty is on the throne, and if I'm not mistaken, I think it's been said that, like, Rhaenyra is Daenerys' ancestor. I feel like Rhaenyra has to win. Um, but, yeah, it, it's just it's just stressful. Um, as of right now, I still think she is just a woman who is doing her best. She feels as though the whole world has been against her, and, and it kind of has in a lot of ways. Um, and her own children are stuck in this war that she wanted no part on. This wasn't the world she wanted for herself or her family. Um, and I think rewatching the first episode, it's going to be particularly heartbreaking to rewatch those scenes between Rhaenyra and Alison, and even the scenes in later episodes where they were still kind of close, because things could have gone so differently for them if scheming people weren't behind the scenes. Um, so the children themselves, the fact that kind of Aegon did lead his, I actually want to call them cousins, but they're really his ne nephews in bullying his brother. And you know, you've got Aemond, who is a bit more, he's not sensitive, but he's not a warrior. You know, he doesn't, he's not a natural born warrior, which is totally fine. Maybe not in a Westeros knight heavy world, but they really do need to start pulling together and it seems as though Helena is very sciencey or like intelligent so I'm intrigued by these kids similarly you've got Rhaenyra's children 
who Jace, Jaharis, and I don't know the other one's name. That's annoying. But you have their children as well. And they seemingly are a little bit more like brothers, but then they're also that little bit younger in particular. And the third one is Joffrey. So I also can understand how when you are someone in Alicent's position, she is fighting for her children's future as far as she's concerned. She is fighting for their very safety and survival. She is fighting to make the best of the shit hand life dealt her in so many ways. You then have Rhaenyra, who not only has got away with everything she's ever wanted, and, you know, is producing these children that are very clearly not her husband's, by all understandings of custom. And even if that was a load of crap, even if when we cut to Rhaenyra scenes and Rhaenyra and Lena would be like, oh God, I mean, yeah, our children all have brown hair and that is really random, but like your granddad had brown hair. And so that's obviously why, you know, even if they were like, oh, these are definitely his kids, it wouldn't matter. It would, because so much of it is what people think. And once that rumor is out there, and in this world, the, the looks of the Targaryens and the Valerians are so important. That's part of why they inbreed so much. Um, they are so clearly bastards that you kind of would feel like her children are going to be slighted over these bastards. And if Alicent had ever been suspected of sleeping with somebody other than her husband, she would be dead. You know, she, there would be no one there to protect her. There would be no one to cast a willfully ignorant eye. And it is kind of to see these double standards. At the end of the day, Alicent's anger should be aimed at her father and the king and not at Rhaenyra, but that is not the world they live in. They're not living in a world where she can see other outlets for this anger. And that final scene to me really made me feel like we're going to almost see Alicent having nowhere else to turn, if you know what I mean. And by that I mean she's with, oh, I can't remember the name, evil Mr. Strong, who, who, you know, was totally cool with killing his family to further his own personal power. Um, he manipulated Alison in the previous episode he's clearly been doing that he's spent this last 10 years subtly being like oh yes your majesty you are so hard done by yes queen Alison isn't Rhaenyra awful oh, you know I heard this terrible thing about Rhaenyra the other day you know he's been very much making sure there is a feud and a breach between the two of them this whole time um and he is now I mean he just basically yeah I killed my family for you not did you hear I'm heartbroken he didn't even try to play it off he is making his moves for power he's clearly trying to say look I am a powerful ally for you and I expect to be rewarded I imagine there is potentially an implicit threat that if he were to be found out he would say well the queen ordered it the queen has made it clear that she did not want him to be hand and she ordered me to kill them I feel like that could trap her in kind of being complicit in some of the stuff he does because of the the way they live in and the world they live in where a man's word is always worth more the thing that's going to be very interesting to see is going to be the point where if she begins making these decisions about murdering people herself um and is okay with murdering them herself i will not agree with that obviously and my liking of her will stop but as for now i think i <laughs> I don't necessarily agree with all of her reasonings and her decision makings but I still support her because I do think she is just a woman trapped in an impossible situation trying to survive trying and she's finally been playing the Game of Thrones but it is a world where is actively going against her when everything seems to be going right near as a way potentially that tide may shift when Viserys dies because men will so clearly want a man on the throne and now that Aegon has grown and is old enough to be considered a man I mean like I don't know if Viserys might have a couple more years left in him. You know, he's a young man at this point by their standards. I definitely feel like it's going to be much harder for Rhaenyra to keep the throne and maybe that will see a shift. Um, so the dynamics are just so interesting. So then we have Rhaenyra's family and I kind of thought she and Lena were going to try and like do their duty, have a kid, maybe two, and then do whatever the fuck they wanted on the sides but the fact that Rhaenyra just found a man fell for him had kids with him I mean you go girl I fully support that from like a from a realistic human person looking at this scenario why shouldn't she from a per thinking about the Westeros those boys lives are going to be in danger their entire life because of their heritage now I also think potentially a fresh gene pool into the mix is not a bad thing given that <sighs> Rhaenyra's parents were siblings and um or co were they cousins or were they siblings and then Viserys's parents were siblings or something uh, yeah I think I think that's it Rhaenyra's parents were cousins and then Viserys's parents were siblings and then 
Lainel's mum is also related. Like, they're very related. I think it will probably be nice for a fresh injection of genes and DNA into that blood pool. Um, but by the sense of this time, she is already a woman with a tenuous claim to the throne, regardless as that should be, because she has two brothers who, by stupid medieval right, I know it's fantasy, but you know what I mean, I can't think of another word for it, historic rights, should take the throne above her. Um, it is a risky thing, and for she almost needed to find a lover who also had Valerian features, and the only option there is Damon, and obviously that is not a decent one, simply because they needed to look like Lainor. I think it's also interesting in that, like, you can kind of see with Damon and Lena's children that they are um, mixed race, and you clearly can't see that with Lainor and Rhaenyra's children. Like, there was no attempt to disguise these children for who they really were, which could put them at risk. Honestly, looking at it at this point, I honestly, I mean, obviously we don't know what the people think, but you kind of know that this is a patriarchal society, and if Aegon were to be presented as the glorious young prince, isn't he handsome and sportsmanlike, even if he's a shit person in real life, that wouldn't matter. If he was presented as the golden, wonderful prince, you could definitely see Rhaenyra and her children struggling to take what should be her rightful place because we as viewers are like well why should not a woman be queen when i sort of, I'm, I'm fully aware that i want Rhaenyra to be queen but you could definitely see how you know she technically has committed adultery and she definitely has produced bastards and claimed them as legitimate and all of that that her position is extremely tenuous and for someone like Alison who has struggled through so much and is now fighting for her children's very survival to as far as she's concerned to see Rhaenyra kind of get whatever she wants would be extremely frustrating I think things will change dramatically when Viserys dies, but at the end of the day, the powerful lords and nobles will support whoever they believe will give them power. Whoever they believe will be the most easily manipulated or controlled or will give them what they want. Um, and they're not... Some of them will care about doing the right thing by the realm. A lot of them will not. So for Rhaenyra, she's playing such a risky game. I mean, we've definitely seen little young Rhaenyra was not afraid of playing such risky games, but her children are already asking her and I think it's so interesting that when the oldest boy did ask her is he my father she just said you're a Targaryen that's all that matters she didn't say no your father is Lenor. she just basically said yes but you're a Targaryen and that's the bit that counts which I like not lying to them I think may I mean you know it's the way things were between them if she told Alison yeah you know look I almost slept with my uncle and then I slept with Kristen Cole maybe Alison would have been like oh my god you're so lucky like maybe they would have talked about it but realistically you probably would have freaked out and one of them told the series because of the way her life was um but there's not lying to him i think shows a very good dynamic between and you know it's quite sad that their dad's now dead and separated from them regardless lenor is definitely miserable in his life i wonder if joffrey hadn't died if he would have been happier with his with someone that he truly loved although maybe he truly loves this young man I mean, Rhaenyra made it seem like he's had many young men but i, I imagine he has there were some of those he would have truly cared for and some of them would just be you know like nobles do in those days you have a bit on the side because it's fun um so Rina, her position i think as she's grown older and as alison has made her moves more i mean has begun making moves that are quite apparent including her son's wearing green all the time i think alice we're seeing Rhaenyra, sorry much more aware now that there is a struggle um and i i think I, mean, I do not appreciate the idea of a aunt marrying her nephew but aside from that, the concept of marrying their houses to try and prevent any struggle between the two isn't a bad one, and even phrasing it as they could rule together, implying that Helena would also have power. It's not the worst idea that's ever been had, in a Targaryen sense, in a real world sense, I'm like, incest. Um, but this is the same girl that is probably still regretting the fact that she didn't up with her uncle. Um, it actually was, it showed... A desire to stop the bloodshed, um, which I do commend, and I do think... Oh, it's so hard because I genuinely think they should have thought about it, should have discussed it, and even Alison should have been like, okay, but what guarantee is there that my sons will be fine? Um, at the end of the day, though, it would be an aunt marrying her nephew. That's just weird. I don't care if their ages are similar. It's weird. Um, but at least Rhaenyra was trying. I feel like... A little bit more of this understanding when they were younger might have come in so handy if from the moment of the marriage they'd almost stayed close things could have been so different um but i also fully understand that she was also a child at the time so you cannot blame anyone for how they act when they're a child in that way 
um i think she's more aware of the tenuous nature of her position she still fully believes she's i will be queen one day and that is what is going to happen but i think she's more aware that there could be turmoil and bloodshed and she'd like for there not to be um it's just oh, it's just all such a mess you know and i don't see a way out of this without one side losing everything they hold dear and their children and i, I don't want that um my current prediction is that Rhaenyra will win <laughs> Um, and her children will sit on the throne. M maybe Alicent's will temporarily win, but ultimately they will die without issue or something. I don't know. But yeah, it's going to be messy. Kristen Cole, like, I, I seriously, like, I, I don't, I don't know how the man is still there. I imagine it's largely Alicent's influence because she so desperately needed an ally and needed somebody that, like her, felt wronged by Rhaenyra. Um, but this man just murdered someone in the middle of the court. And, you know, it's now openly, I mean, he basically openly implied the princes were bastards. And just got away with that too. Viserys, obviously, I suppose if you punish him for that, then are you, I don't know, you're giving credence to the rumour. He's playing a game. And yeah, some of his comments I do not appreciate. So Kristen Cole, if he... If he hadn't casually beaten someone to death, I probably would quite like still and think, yeah, you were quite hard done by. I mean, you also were a bit of an idiot thinking she would ever run away with you. But no, I, d I don't like the man. Um, and it makes me sad because, like I said, I am firmly, I am going to do my best to support both Rhaenyra and Alicent to the bitter end. Obviously, if either one of them starts doing things I don't agree with, I will be like, I used to support you. I will not, you know, I'm not someone that's like, I like that person, therefore I don't care if they massacre that village. <laughs> but Alice's team is getting darker and darker. I don't like it. Uh, so then Damon and Elena, they got together. Now, I I wonder how the fuck did that happen? They didn't tell us. I want to know. This is why I don't mind the 10 year time jump, but I almost wish the show had begun with a voiceover a bit like we had with the um, ceremony to choose J. Harris as heir. Where we could have been like, in the 10 years, this happened, and this happened, and this happened, and now we are here. Because most of it you can pick up. Obviously, you can pick up Damon and Elena did marry. But why were they across the sea? Did they elope and therefore have to flee to be there because they didn't get permission to marry? Um, did they just leave because Damon was sulking? Because there were now 100 different people before his claim to the throne? Um, it's all very interesting. Um, I wonder, at any point, did he proposition really nearer to be like i can give you white haired children I, I, I mean who knows but they had a very interesting marriage it seemed very much one that there was affection and, com and like kind of a companionship there but also they both kind of knew they did it for reasons they, they did it because they wanted the same thing not because they were desperately in love then their two daughters um Bela, and i'm actually not sure the other one's name and it seems as though Damon favours the one that has a dragon over the one that doesn't, which it's not her fault. It's completely random whether or not dragons hatch. Um, but they had such an interesting life. And the idea that Damon has just spent a decent chunk of these past 10 years sulking across the sea, reading books. I, I, I mean, that is the most likeable the man has been in the entire show. <laughs> um, he's going to be an interesting character. I feel like it's potentially the fact that Lena wanted to go home, wanted to be with her family again is that going to spur him to take her children back for her and then he's going to end up getting sucked straight back into the game of thrones i feel like he definitely the world was better off when he was just riding his dragon across the sea um but those are some more players that it's going to be interesting to see how they meld back in and for me i don't like daemon targaryen i think some of the brutality we saw when he was leading the city watch into the city in the first episode we have definitely seen a lot of instances where he's a shit man not the less grooming his own niece um but I do admire his reading. <laughs> I do admire him for the fact that when he was given the thing of like, I don't know what to do, that baby will not come. We could potentially cut it out, but maybe the baby will die, maybe not. And then he asked what will happen to, the, to my wife. And the guy was like, not going to happen. And he looked distressed and he didn't know what to do. And he did not order it. He didn't say... I'm gonna take the decision away. I'm pretty sure he could have said, hold her down, we're cutting open that, we're cutting her out. But he didn't. And I think that actually gives him a slight mark of respect above his brother. Although he's also done a lot of shit things. And Lena wanted to die a dragon rider's death. She certainly did that. I mean, there, there are less painful ways to go than being burnt alive. I suppose maybe that level of heat, are you kind of just incinerated instantly? 
of her dragon. It's going to be pretty messed up. I haven't done that to the person it was bonded to, but it's quite an elderly dragon. Unusual. We haven't seen many of those, obviously. Um, there's another dragon out there that needs a rider. Her daughter better get there quick. But yeah, that that was really tragic. This character that we saw as like a baby who they wanted to marry to the king, and then we saw her as slightly older and quite confident, and then we saw her as a mother who truly loved her children, and then we just saw her as dead. So that was a very sad trajectory. I really was enjoying her character and wanted to see more of it. Um, not quite one that made me cry yet because I feel like we've seen such flashes of these lives. <sighs> this was a very in-depth episode. I'm so intrigued by the children. I want to know more about them. You know, so far Aegon seems a bit like a womanising privileged prince dick but then he is also a privileged prince so there that goes with the territory. Be interesting to see how all of the children shape up um, and how the rest of this Game of Thrones plays out in the House of the Dragon. Reminder that you can find the unedited version of this reaction on my Patreon and thank you so much for watching.